Now, following its official inauguration in April this year, the Namibia Revenue Agency has made great strides in recovering the taxes owed to the Namibian government. Joining us in studio this morning with more details on the agency's achievements, as well as future plans, is Namra's commissioner, none other than Sam Shivute. Good morning, sir, and welcome to Good Morning Namibia. Uh, good morning, Denver, and uh, thank you for having us on the Good Morning Show, and good morning, Namibians. Commissioner Shivute, it's a well-documented fact that you hit the ground running about a year ago when you were appointed to head uh, NAMRA. Um, how has the, the past year been, but more specifically, how have the past four months been? Well, the, the, the past four months, it has been very busy. As we all know that institutions are built by people, and we have been very much preoccupied in ensuring that we get the right people in the right position. But at the same time, while well, we are making sure that we have the right people in the right positions as well, uh, revenue has to be con uh, co collected. So we, it has been very busy. But you hit the ground running a year ago already. Perhaps you can take us through that journey very briefly. Well, uh, starting off last year, and as, as I have indicated before, when you, when you are responsible for building an institution, there are some fundamentals that has to be in place. For example, you've got to build what we call a unified uh, vision, building a unifying vision. Uh, then you have to have a strategy. And after the strategy, you then need to work to have the people in place that's now getting the right people in the right position that's now getting everyone on board that matters. Then, of course, you have to focus on results. And that's what we have been preoccupied with. And the good thing is that, yes, we managed to get a good team and we still continue recruiting. But also, we were also very lucky that uh, we, very, we have a very supportive government, supportive uh, po political principles. But apart from that as well, we were able to very secure um, technical assistance for the, from the likes of GIZ, IMF, and uh, I think uh, with those assistance, I think uh, we are very pretty much positive that we will build this world-class revenue agency. You place a lot of emphasis on the right team, but you, of course, also place a lot of emphasis on getting the right results. Please walk us through the key accomplishments of NAMRA over the past four months. Okay, over the past four, four months, but now uh, we, we can talk about six months now because if we really, we, we launch on the, we, we, NAMRA was gazetted on the 6th of April, then the President, uh, His Excellency Dr. Hage G. Genkop, launched NAMRA on the 7th of uh, April. But from April the 7th up to now, uh, last time when I spoke to you on the 5th of October, we talked about having already collected about 47% uh, of the, uh, the revenue target, which is now uh, 49 billion. By last week when I spoke to you, we've collected about uh, 23 billion of that amount. But I'm very happy to report to you this morning that uh, in actual fact now we are at 53%. Uh, That's a uh, 26 billions that has been collected since the launch of NAMRA, and the work still continues. What do you attribute that success to? I think, uh, uh, well, uh, I, I think there's a lot of work to be done. We, we need to raise a lot of awareness. And again, if I have to talk about what do we contribute a success to, that success to, uh, with, the current, with NAMRA, we have uh, three factors that drives our uh, operating model, and that operating model starts it starts off with uh, service, I mean, or saving with passion. Then the second one is education, and even when I'm here this morning, this is part of our education process as well. But the third one is really enforcement, and enforcement is where we're going to focus more attention going forward as well. Speaking about enforcement, part of what is owed to the Namibian government relates to historic debt. Please walk us through that. Well, yes, you, you, you're right. Uh, part of that which is owed, which is the capital, as you have been told, is 12 billion, interest is 8 billion, and penalty to the amount of uh, uh, 36 billion. I think you have a number of uh, tax debt that has been historically, as you rightly put it, and some of it started as, as, uh, immediately after independence up to now. And uh, I, I think if, uh, if you then look at our current operating models that starts with service, you need to provide tax services. Then you need to do a lot of education. We need to do more education so that we can raise ta uh, tax molarity and also really improve compliance as well. I think the, on the enforcement, on the enforcement, I think that is where we need to do more. I'll, I'll give you an example of a number of other 
um, uh, tax administration that we know in different jurisdictions, when it comes to enforcement after they have ensured that proper education has been done, we have seen cases, let's talk about SALS, you, you, you speak about one case where close to a billion is collected just from one taxpayer. You see cases of uh, when you have uh, goods that you cannot account for or maybe you haven't paid your taxes, uh, property and assets are confiscated and so on. So sometimes when your laws, the law gives you power of what needs to be done in terms of non-compliance and you do not apply that law, what you are putting in the mind of taxpayer out there is that, well, I can be non-compliant and nothing will be done. So uh, the most effective and some of the world-class revenue agents that we've seen, if you take care of this model, the operating model, where you make sure that you provide the proper service, you make it easy for the taxpayer to comply, you educate, you raise awareness, you help businesses to be able to comply because you do not want businesses to, uh, to close down because of taxation matter. You want to help them because the more business you have, the good for the economy the good for your country. As provided well. they comply. Provided they comply. There must be no com compromise on, 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 on compliance. Mm. So, but but the, key, uh, out of, the key factors out of this operating model is really enforcement. And um, again, uh, if you, you, you look at SALS, just our neighbors here, and look at how many assets have they taken out of those who are not complying? Uh, how many people have been um, uh, prostituted? If you look at our tax jurisprudence, you go to our higher court and look at many cases involving tax evasion and so on. How many cases can you pick there? But, but I'm also very happy to note that, look, when you deal with tax administration, remember that uh, most of the taxpayers... They, have a, they appoint the best accountant to be able to help them sometime, even to avoid tax. And sometimes they have also evaded tax as well in that line as well. Now, that's very briefly for the layperson. Help us distinguish between tax evasion and tax avoidance on the other hand. Okay. Uh, the tax, tax avoidance is a way whereby a taxpayer can minimize not paying more taxes, but it's not illegal. Whilst tax evasion is illegal means of not paying taxes. Dodging paying taxes. That's correct, yeah. So tax, avoid, uh, tax, av uh, tax avoidance, you still find legal way of not paying more, but that's not criminal. But tax evade, when you're supposed to pay and you, 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 you then uh, employ schemes to not pay taxes where you evade, that's criminal. Now the question that you need to ask yourself is that how many uh, uh, how many evaders have been taken to book or taken to court. But I'm very happy to say with these uh, right people that we are talking about that we have been getting on board, uh, for the first time as well, uh, at least now already, we, we have a chartered accountant and we'll get some more. We get uh, admitted legal practitioners, both of the higher court and the Supreme Court. And I think when you administer about... Uh, uh, seven laws, uh, seven uh, act of parliament, you, you need lawyers, qualified lawyers, you need accountant, you need economist, you need uh, investigator, you need detective, you need people who can make things happen. So, uh, and, and we're moving in that right direction, I'm very happy. From our understanding, in pursuit of greater compliance, um, the legislative framework as it stands also provides for incentives, although we also understand that the capital portion needs to be settled as far as this historic debt is concerned. But those incentives relate more to the interest as well as the penalties. Please talk to us briefly about that. Uh, yes, uh, like uh, now the, the, the Minister of Finance just before the launch of uh, NAMRA introduced what you call a uh, tax relief program where with those people who are owing the, uh, the, the NAMRA or Namibian government in tax debt as well, they can come forward. What they are required to do is to file through the integrated tax administration system, which we call ITAS. You, they file their returns there. They pay the capital amount. And the moment you pay the capital amount and you have filed through the system all your returns, then 75% uh, of your interest is, is written off. Then also all the penalty disappeared. So all you need to do is to pay the capital amount. So because the thing is that the, the, the capital amount cannot be written off not even by minister, the capital amount, it has to be settled. So what we try to encourage the Namibian people, those who are not in good standing or those who are owing the state, is that you have to do all the, you make all the necessary arrangement to make sure that the, the capital amount is paid. Because even by, if one dies, 
still the office will still come after your estate and, and recoup it from the estate. That's correct. Yeah. If yeah. you if you merely claim that uh, you, you 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 love your 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 loved one, your family, and so on, you need to get your house in order while you're still alive. If it's a business or a company, if you go into liquidation, the tax office, the receiver still is still number one among the creditors. So the, so you, you, like we are always told that there are. Two things that are very certain in life is death and paying taxes. So you either pay now or you will pay while you are in your grave. So just do the right thing. Commissioner, you and I both know that we need continued engagement, not only to sensitize and educate our public, but also to highlight the critical importance of that very fact that one needs to honor that obligation. Yeah. But unfortunately, we're running out of time. In conclusion, please touch on the number of registered taxpayers that we have at the present moment and what the future looks like for NAMRA. Okay. The... The, the number of uh, taxpayers that we have at the present moment is by the end of uh, September, we have uh, 887,500, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so just closer to 900,000. Uh, but uh, ag again, where we're moving as NAMRA, we're really committed to be a world-class revenue agency. Uh, saving with passion to positively impact the livelihood of every Namibian. We want to call upon all Namibians and to inform them that everyone can become great. And the best way of becoming great is to be of service. One of the best ways to become of service to your country is just to make sure that you pay your share fair or taxes to the government. And when you do that, when the government then provides that service or to be able to... Because our service is very simple. We, stand, we are there to enable the state to provide dignified standard of living to every Namibian. But all of us can contribute by paying our fair share of taxes. I thank you very much, and I look forward to engaging you again, my brother. Is the number of registered taxpayers at the moment a, ref a true reflection of the number of Namibians who ought to be ta paying tax? I, I, th I think it can be better than that. Definitely it can be better than that because, again, even within that 887,000 uh, registered taxpayer, like we reported to the Namibian people on the 5th of October, only 57 of that number, 57% of that number that is compliant. By compliant, we mean they are registered and they, they file their returns and they pay. And we still yet to determine whether they really pay their uh, fair share of taxes to the state. And the hashtag remains be unlimited. That's very correct. You have to be unlimited because we are unlimited being limited only by the concept of limitation that we place in our minds. So be unlimited. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was Namaras Commissioner Sam Shibuta talking to us about the successes over the past four or five months, but also speaking to us about the future of the Revenue Agency. We'll be right back after a brief break.